Hello, and welcome to the fourth video on my series on using the TI-83 series calculators. This video will focus on using menus and the functions that are already built into the calculator. There are several buttons that will bring you to a menu if you press them while on the home screen. For example, if you hit the math button, it will bring you to this menu. You can scroll through the menu with the arrow keys and select an option with the enter key. You can also select an option by hitting the corresponding number. The first option in this particular menu is the frac option, and this has nothing to do with Battlestar Galactica, so don't even ask. Frac is short for fraction. In the previous video, I talked about inputting fractions, but you may have been disappointed to see that the value that was returned was not a fraction. Well, you're in luck. I was ecstatic when I first found this function. Putting frac at the end of your expression will return a fraction instead of a decimal, if it's possible. So let's enter 7 eighths plus 3. The calculator returns 3.875. I want to see that as a fraction, so I'll press math and select fraction, and the calculator automatically places ANS in front of it so that it will convert the previous decimal to a fraction. I hit enter and I get 31 eighths. Fractions always return values in the most reduced fraction. That means that it's also convenient to reduce fractions. If I enter 45 divided by 20 and tell the calculator to express the answer as a fraction, it returns 9 fourths. Now to get back to menus. We obviously use the menu to get to this, particularly the math button. The program button, the mode button, the stat button are examples of buttons that bring up menus. Different pages of the menu can be accessed with the left and right arrows if they're there. Like if we wanted something from the number menu, we'd hit the right arrow key. Also notice that there is an arrow instead of a colon in the lowest item in the menu. That means that there are items below that item that we can scroll down to. If you find yourself in a menu that you don't want to be in, notice that the second function of the mode button is quit. This is your magic flute to get you back to the home screen. In the future, just so you know, quit works for programs and graphs as well. I don't intend to go over every menu, in fact there are many that I have never even seen myself, I'm sure but you should know how to, how to navigate menus for future reference because many of the things that we're going to be doing require the use of menus. Now to move on to functions. Bear in mind that when I refer to a second function of a button that means something different than mathematical function. There are several built-in functions for the 83 series. Let's start with the base 10 logarithm function. When we press the log button on the left side of the calculator, the prompt will display the word log with an open parenthesis. If you haven't already learned about logs in your algebra class, you will. This is the log base 10 function, and right below it is the ln key, which means natural log, and displays an ln and open parenthesis when you press it. To take the log of a number, say 8, we press the log button, press 8, close the parenthesis and hit enter and it will return 0.903 blah 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 this of course is the common log of 8 now I want to point something out this is an irrational number that means that you can't convert it to a fraction because a fraction is a rational number the same will happen if you do the square root of 2 or if you take the sine of 45 degrees the result will be 0 0.7071 blah 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 Type in the square root of 2 over 2 and you'll see that they are equal. If your calculation does something that looks weird like this and using frac doesn't return a fraction, it probably means that you have an irrational number. There is no way that I know of to have the 83 series display irrational numbers any differently, so you may have to do some algebra on paper to get the exact answer that your professor is wanting to see. Now I said to close the parenthesis, but you don't always have to do that. In this case, you really didn't have to. But it's a good habit to have, because if you're using a log in a larger expression, you want to close the log 
or else the calculator will think that everything after the log is meant to be taken as part of the log. The same goes for any other function. Other functions include sine, cosine, tangent, inverse sine, inverse cosine, inverse tangent, and a lot of others that can be found through the menus. Also, the 10 to the power of x and e to the power of x and square root are functions. I can't go through every single function, and you wouldn't want me to. Instead, you can look up different functions through Google as you need them. Now, to return our focus to the menus. The second function of the zero key is called catalog. This menu is a master list of just about every function on the calculator. If you're frustrated finding the function that you're looking for, but you know what it's called, you can find it here. In this menu, you may notice an A in the upper right corner. This means that if you press a button on the calculator that has a letter above and to the right of it, it will bring you to the part of the list where the entries start with that letter. The mode menu is a fairly important menu. Press the mode button to view it. Notice that this is a different kind of menu. It doesn't have pages, but instead multiple entries per row. If you select something in the menu, it's highlighted, and whatever was highlighted before in the same row is no longer highlighted. By default, the leftmost entry of every row will be highlighted. That's the way you want to keep it. If you go into trigonometry, you'll be switching between degrees and radians occasionally. And in a later section, we will change the second to last row from real to A plus BI, but don't keep it that way.